Hey everybody, welcome to How To Tuesday. Today, we're gonna learn how to build the ultimate fishing machine. Well, at least for me. This is my brand new 2021 Yellowfin 24CE. And we're gonna go all through it. We're gonna start on the outside, go all the way through. Now listen, it's easy to do this with a video. So we have a, we have a video that you can go to on our YouTube channel. Go to Saltwater Experience. Look up Tom Rowland Podcast Playlist. It's probably going to be at the very bottom because it just published. So you can go through and you can watch if you find it easier. I'm going to do my very best to explain this in a way that everybody can understand whether you're listening on audio or you're watching on video. So if you'd like to go over to the video, do that now. Otherwise, let's go and check this whole thing out. This is my brand new 2021 Yellowfin 24CE bay boat. The CE stands for carbon. The carbon has taken a tremendous amount of weight out of this boat. So I can do things in this boat that I wasn't able to do before. I can go in shallower water. I can go faster with less horsepower. I can go further on a tank of gas. All kinds of things are, are happening in this boat. There's some really exciting things that we've got going on in it too. We're gonna go over everything on the outside while well, we got it out of the water right now. So first of all, I have the whole thing sitting on an Ameritrail trailer. That's really important to me because the trailer is literally where the rubber meets the road. If you've got an awesome trailer, I can take this boat anywhere I wanna go. I wanna go to Louisiana, I wanna go to California, I wanna go wherever. I can throw the boat on the trailer, it's ready to go. If I got a hurricane coming, I throw the boat on the trailer, ready to go. It's got a 100,000 mile warranty on the Vortex hubs, so I don't even have to worry about the hubs or the bearings. Those things are ready to go, sealed. The wiring on this trailer is amazing. It's all pinned up, LED lights on the whole thing. So man, this is maintenance free trailer. I love that. Got a spare tire, that's super important. Um, we're gonna go down the, the uh, outside of this boat. I got this boat done in Whisper Gray. I like Whisper Gray, it's my favorite color for a boat. I I've had dark hulls before, and a lighter cap. Um, I've had all different color a boat. The Whisper Gray for me is the best color for a boat in this area because it doesn't show dirt like a white boat does and the hull does not scratch like a dark hull. So if I get a scratch on this hull, it, it's not that noticeable. You get a scratch on a black hull, more noticeable. And uh, that, can be a, that can be a problem. Some people don't like that. I don't like to see that. So this looks new, the longest in my opinion. And I love this color combination. Everything on the boat is black and uh, the whisper gray. So black and whisper gray, whisper gray hull, whisper gray cap. I've got whisper gray everywhere. The whole thing's whisper gray. That's the way I like it. We work our way to the back here. I've got a Mercury V8 Verado. This is a brand new Seapro uh, Verado. Very excited about this. You can change the oil when it's out, when it's in the water if you need to. There's all kinds of cool stuff about this. I've got a Bob's Machine Shop jack plate on this to get even more performance out of it. That will help me to both get up on plane and shallow water, and it will also help me to go faster and get good fuel economy by adjusting the engine up and down to get the perfect balance. I've got two power pole blade twin twin power poles, 10 feet, they're blades. These things are remote control with just the remote control. There's a control on the dash and I can use my phone. I can hook up my phone to this to be able to operate one of these or both of these and I can adjust the speed. I can adjust the whole thing. This is a game changer because with, with a boat like this, it would be hard to fish this boat for the types of fish that we fish for, redfish, bonefish, permit, tarpon, uh, snook, all of these different fish. If you could only get to them, being able to stop the boat is super important. Power poles are an absolute game changer. I love the way that they now have this mount. They've got twin mounts here that go underneath the, uh, the Bob's Machine Shop jack plate, and they are super, Awesome. We used to put holes into the hull. Don't like that as much as these. This is this is the way to go. Got the Lawrence transducer down there, and now we're ready to get in into the uh, into the boat. Look at these little details though. Before I get into the boat with the trailer, like this trailer comes standard with things like um, these these straps. They're on the boat all the time. You just put this right there. Give it a couple little. And you're tight, ready to go. 
nice, nice touch. The whole thing's nice touch. So I'm going to get in the boat. We'll work from the back forward. All right. So big part about a bay boat is that you want a bay boat so you can carry more stuff into the same places that you went in a skiff for, for a lot of people. One of the things that you want to carry is bait. So in this boat, I have some pretty sophisticated live wells, three 50 gallon live wells. So I have 150 gallons of live well storage in this boat. That rivals an offshore boat. That's, that's a lot of live well storage. This one in the middle is pretty cool. I don't know if you can see this, but it has a plexiglass lid. So if you have some delicate baits, pilchards or something like that, you fill the, the live well with the, uh, with the bait and the water. Then you close this and it fills the water all the way slap to the top. So that when we're going over rough water or whatever, it's like if you took a, uh, uh, a jug of water, right? And you have a, uh, you have half, you put a goldfish in a gallon of, of water and you fill that all the way to the top. If you shake that, the fish barely moves. If you have three quarters of a jug of water and you start shaking that, the fish, it, it it's, gets beat up all over the place. Same principle here. If we have the water all the way to the top and sealed, our baits are going to be Nice, they're, no matter what we do in the rough water, they're gonna be sitting nicely. They'll be able to stay alive. This is a big, big, big time uh, feature, that plexiglass lid. So 50 gallons, 50 gallons, and another 50 gallons over here. On that one, so three live wells in the bottom, in the back. This is a new feature for this year. Um, before, this is a removable uh, lean post. You can put that down there. Before, this was a split uh, compartment. So if you needed something under here, you had to kind of reach over there. Now, they've. this is a big improvement if you ask me. It's a flip, le level, a flip lid, so I have complete access to everything in the bilge. I've got three bilge pumps in there, um, and then a uh, three live well pumps, a bilge pump, an extra bilge pump, and uh, we're ready to go. I've got recirculating pumps on all the wells as well and a bubbler. The bubbler is really important because when I um, when I have shrimp and I want to keep them overnight, the bubbler is the best for that. All right, so now we're up at the console area and uh, first we've got a 65 Yeti uh, underneath. That sits under there. I got four rod holders here so I can carry a lot of rods and then this is a pretty nice improvement. We worked with Yellowfin to do. This is a pretty nice thing. You got 3,600 uh, Plano storage. Don't have any of my tackle in here, but I got a 3,600 tackle bag. I usually just take these out, put those in, in my tackle bag, and uh, I can move from boat to boat. But this is a nice place to keep all your tackle organized um, for the 3,600. I went with, on this boat, Rich has a 16 inch single unit. We can do that, but I like, personally, I like to have backup of everything. I think two is one, one is none, even on the best electronics like this Lorance. This is HDS 12. I've got a 12 here and a 12 here. I can't fit two 16s or I would've put two 16s there, but I like two 12 inch units because I can keep my, my, my chart on one, my sonar and down scan on another, or I could have radar on one um, and then I could have a chart on another, or if I'm in a really tricky place, I can have one chart here and another chart here, which displays slightly different information. So the two units, I really like those. Uh, I have a third unit on the top. We'll check, check that out in a minute. I've got the JL Audio Media Master. So I got my kids in the boat or I'm washing the boat, taking care of it. I don't really listen to music while I'm fishing, but I do like to listen to music while we're running back and forth or while I'm cleaning up the boat. So I've got JL Audio speakers here, forward, and uh, that's it. So here in the lean post, forward, and this is where we control all the music. Um, so that's that. This is a Mercury SmartCraft gauge. I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, get a lot of engine information here. I can also display that here, and I can use this as a different display if I want to. I could put something else down here. That's pretty nice. Jack plate controls, my Mercury throttle, kill switch, 
This is something that a lot of people don't necessarily have or need on their boat. I've got twin uh, USB chargers here because we often do a lot of filming in the boat. People need to charge stuff. I need to charge my phone. Uh, so I have that um, very limited switch panel because a lot of this is done through C-Zone. But I like to control my live wells if I can. Just turn on, turn off. I don't like to go through C-Zone to, to do the live wells. I just want to turn them on or turn them off. So that's what that is there. This is the power pole remote. This switch is for my rigid light that goes forward. So now we're on the top, second station. I've got a complete second station up here, throttle, steering wheel, power pole, uh, jack plate. This is the Sirius XM antenna. And I have another 12 inch uh, HCS unit up here. We'll ride up here and we might see things that we couldn't see down below, including fish, including coral heads, including navigational hazards. So sometimes we ride up here if it's nice and calm. I can enter the waypoints up here that will display on all the other units, or I can see whatever is already there. So my tracks, my waypoints, everything like that up here in a, in a unit. Uh, radar antenna, nav lights, uh, VHS an antenna up here as well. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the top station. So now we're in the front of the console. Got a rigid light up here. Uh, that's for night stuff, lobstering, it's different things like that. And then this is the really impressive part of this boat. The wiring on these yellow fins is perfect. I mean, you could follow every single wire. They're all labeled exactly what they are. So if you have a problem with your boat, which you will, no matter how expensive that boat is, no matter how good it is, you fish with it long enough in salt water, you're gonna have some sort of issue. This allows you to be able to follow every single wire, diagnose that super fast and get back on the water and, and there. So I can turn off the batteries there. I've got a uh, Lorentz VHS radio right here and uh, twin lithium Pro batteries. This is super important. The lithium pro batteries are a game changer. They're an absolute game changer. First of all, I'm not going to run out of battery power. These batteries will charge five times faster than a lead acid battery. They are one fifth of the weight, one fifth of the weight. So I saved a ton of weight by going to these batteries and I'm getting way better performance. Um, everything else that's in here, I've got my power pole pumps inside here, and this is a good place for something I want to keep dry. This is where I keep all of my emergency gear. This is where I keep um, some of the life jackets and some of the, anything that I want to make sure that I keep dry stays in the console. On the outside, we got two more JL audio speakers facing forward, four rod holders on each side. And then this is where we stand if we're gonna be on the upper station. So that's the console. And then as we move up to the bow, this is a redesign from a few years ago. There's a step here. This is a fish box or a utility box. It's really got a cool feature right here where uh, you can't fit a um, five gallon bucket in here. So they actually put uh, a little depression in the middle so that you can actually fit a five gallon bucket there. That's where most people put their cast nets. Keep your cast nets in here. You can have ice for fish in here. This can be your cooler. It can be whatever you want. I use it as kind of a wet storage. Anything I wanna keep like cast nets and stuff like that, stinky, cause I can wash it right out and, and make it clean uh, really easily. On the front, there's three hatches. They're all separated. This one is really cool because this is where, you know, this is your main hatch. This is where um, tackle bag goes. This is where your life jackets go, your anchor, wherever. But if you look in the second hatch underneath here, there's a sub hatch. And the sub hatch has all of the trolling motor batteries and my power pole charger. Now, this is a really important part of the boat because like it's one thing just to have this new boat and that's awesome. I love the boat, but to be able to go as far as I want to, as long as I want to on the trolling motor, to never have to worry about how much my electronics are drawing down the battery, to never have to worry about a dead battery when I'm a hundred miles away from the dock. 
don't have to worry about that anymore. The power pole charge is the best battery charger that's ever existed. It's three things in one. It's an emergency start, it's a traditional battery charger, and it's a charge on the run, meaning that I can use it as a traditional battery charger. I plug it in at night and my batteries are gonna be topped off in the morning. Boom, done. Just like a regular charger. But these batteries, the Lithium Pros, charge, as I said before, they charge five times faster. So I'm gonna be able to get a full charge much, much faster and uh, be ready to go. Then as I run to my spot, and if you know the keys, you know that we routinely will run an hour, one direction or another, no big deal. I'm getting more charge there. Now, if I have a battery that is low, the power pole charge system is going to find that battery and route the excess charge from the motor to the weaker battery. So everything, you know, every angler is different. You may use your trolling motor more than other people. You may need more priority on your trolling motor. You can even adjust that on the power pole uh, charge system on the app, which is really cool. I actually have it right here. This boat is already set up on, um, on it with the Sea Monster app, this right here. And if I go right here, it's disconnected. I say, okay, it's going to connect automatically. And when it does, it shows me exactly what charge I have in all of these different things. I can, char I can change the priority for more trolling motor or more engine start, depending on what your uses are. And I can see that it's charging. If I have it plugged in, it'll show that it's charging. If I'm out there fishing, it'll show exactly what the batteries are. So that is super nice. That charging app from PowerPole, very handy. Um, so that's, that's that deal. And then when you close that up, you got a nice clean place for your, uh, for your gear, whatever, whatever it is on top of it. You don't have to put all your stuff on top of a battery. We've got two identical hatches here. These, um, great for, I've got rod storage going back that way. So if I wanna store fly rods, I have uh, two rod tubes going back that way, two rod tubes on that side. I can put my fly rods, I can put my spinning rods, I can put whatever uh, in there. And it helps if it's flexible. Uh, so I don't really put gaffs in there because they're a little bit hard to get out. But uh, fishing rods are perfect, perfect for fly rods. So I got my fly rods in there, very easy to get out, ready to go. Um, and then I got plenty of rod storage for everything else between the, the top, uh, the eight rods on the side, the four on the, uh, on the lean post, plenty of rods, plenty of rod storage. So we got one more hatch to go through here. This is a dedicated anchor hatch. This works perfect for a, a, a Danforth style anchor. You put the anchor right in there and uh, all the line goes down in there. I usually use a Bruce anchor around here. So a lot of times I'll put my anchor in here or in the front hatch here, cause it doesn't really fit in there, but I use that for extra anchor line. And also my um, trolling motor battery tender is in there. So I have a battery tender there. I got cleat, uh, one cleat in the very big uh, bow of the boat, two cleats on the, um, on port and starboard midship. And then I've got two cleats in the back as well. And uh, then I finished the whole thing out with the Motor Guide XI-5 trolling motor, long shaft, so that if I'm offshore, I still have room to, uh, to run this thing. And this boat is pretty incredible. If I can keep the trolling motor um, blade submerged, which is about that much water, so about that much water, I can navigate and fish in this boat anywhere I want to go. So really awesome boat, man. <laughs> this is the best one I've ever built. It's the uh, 2021 Yellowfin 24 CE with a Mercury 300. Very, very excited about this. Very excited to get it out there and show you guys what, what uh, this boat's capable of. Capable of. That was easy to say. <laughs>